I couldn't find anything because I drove to a local beauty supply. I went in there and I asked if there was anything for the beard and the lady looked at me like it was, you know, like, what? Like, <laughs> something for the beard. <laughs> like, no, we have stuff for curly hair. And I was like, okay, you know, maybe, maybe it doesn't exist. Mind you, I hadn't even taken the time to even search on the internet at the time and there were already other beard oil companies out there, but to my knowledge, you know, it wasn't as easy to find as going to a beauty supply or to a CVS or something. So that's what all of those things combined is what prompted me to just solve my own problem. So welcome to the Wow Factor Business Podcast with host Linda Knox. This is the podcast that's designed with a beginner in mind. Linda and her special guest help you as you travel along on your entrepreneurial journey by offering words of hope, words to enlighten, and words to inspire you to launch and persevere. And now, here's your host, Linda Knox. Welcome to this session of the Wow Factor Business Podcast with me, your host, Linda Knox. This is the podcast that is designed with a beginner in mind. And if you're just getting started in your entrepreneurial journey or whatever it is that you feel called to do, well, this is the place to be. Well, all right, here we have another good treat for you guys. And if you're thinking about manufacturing and distri distributing any of your own uh, line of, let's say, male skin product or hair products, well, today's special guest expert has a lot to say about this. He knows the ins and outs and is very successful and runs a successful business as far as this is concerned. Mr. Jacob Cutant is the founder of Nature Boy Grooming Products, and he has an amazing product line. Jacob, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Now, Jacob, I was just saying in the pre-chat there that you are in sunny California. When I, I'm, in, I'm from Ohio, when I placed the call, my, my mind was, because it's winter here, I was, I was kind of upset. I said, oh boy, he's, he's probably going to be gloating about the sun. But you told me it's raining there, right? Yeah, it is actually just pouring down right now as we speak. It is, it is pouring. Okay, good. So I don't feel so bad. <laughs> I don't feel so bad. <laughs> yeah, Normally, it's nice and sunny. Um, that was actually pretty warm a couple of days ago, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be warm again once the rain clears, but right now it's coming down. Well, it won't be long before we'll have that warm weather, too, so we'll catch up with you. Okay, now, Jacob, I was looking around online trying to find somebody who, who manufactured uh, beauty products, and actually, I was trying to find something, to be honest with you, as far as women were concerned. And I stumbled upon your um, website, and it was really fascinating. Now, you started off, and I'm going to be paraphrasing a little bit as, as far as some of the things that I found on your website, and then I'll let you chime in. Now, it says here that you were pretty frustrated because you said you had a scruffy beard, and you wanted to try to find something that could help you to to groom your beard, beard. And you looked around, you couldn't find anything. You went to different stores and you, I finally, I think you found something out of your girlfriend's um, cabinet and, and, and saw that she had some pretty nice products. And you decided that, hey, I think I'm going to take my, my uh, hand at it and try to produce my own products. So long story short, you kind of got that all going out. In your own words, <laughs> kind of tell me how you you came across this beautiful product that you have. Yeah, so I mean, you, you pretty much got it accurate. You know, I was growing my facial hair out back in 2013 and um, early 2014. And at the time, just being just a busy, ambitious guy that I was, one of the last things that i cared about passionately was, you know, grooming my facial hair beyond just, okay, I'm out of the shower, I'm going to pat it dry, and I'm going to brush it a little, and that's it. That was it, you know, because when you get out of the shower, your hair is damp, so it looks cool. So in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, it'll be fine. But um, I remember a coworker, I'll never forget this, I was, at, I was working my retail job at the time, and one of my coworkers said, can I touch your beard? And I said, sure. <laughs> and you know, I took it as a compliment, but then when she touched my beard, she says, oh, wow, it feels like burlap. And she was intrigued, <laughs> but to me, I was like, whoa. You know, I didn't know that it had dried up and got that, that rough, you know? So that stuck with me, one, and then... Um, so then that's when I started looking through the, 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 the cabinet in the bathroom and there was some pink lotion in there, if you're familiar with it. And I just put some pink lotion on my beard thinking, okay, well, this is something, you know, and it made my face itch in the heat. So that 
wasn't it. And my uh, my immediate circle around me, uh, we all, different ones of us at a time, started to take the more natural route and using coconut oil and things of that nature. And a friend of mine's cousin has sent a, a, um, a survey out once asking, you know, if guys, if we moisturize or do we just, you know, put a little lotion on up to our elbows and up to our knees. And, you know, that got me to thinking too. So all of these little things got my mind going and then talking with my barber because he had put some stuff in my beard once. All of these little seeds started to plant in my mind and me just always being an artist and always being an engineer of different sorts, it just, one day it just came to me like, you know, I should just, uh, I should just formulate something for my own beard, you know, not even thinking it was going to go where it's going today. You know, this was just come to DIY household. My, my mom is very crafty. So this was just me wanting to craft something for myself because like you said, like when you read, I couldn't find anything because I drove to a local beauty supply I went in there and I asked if there was anything for the beard and the lady looked at me like it was, you know, like what? Like <laughs> something for the beard. <laughs> like, no, we have stuff for curly hair. And I was like, okay, you know, maybe, maybe it doesn't exist. Mind you, I hadn't even taken the time to even search on the internet at the time. And there were already other beard oil companies out there, but to my knowledge, you know, it wasn't as easy to find as going to a beauty supplier to a CVS or something. So that's what, all of those things combined is what prompted me to just solve my own problem. So Wow. Yeah. Now, you talk about necessity being the mother of invention. So you really took that to heart and you went out and, and you did your own thing. So that you yeah. be commended for that. Now, you also have a bit of a, I mean, you are an artisan and you have another creative side to you. I understand that you're also a musician. What tell? Give us a little background uh, as far as your, uh, your musician. Yeah. So... So I'm a producer and a recording and mixing engineer. I'm a recording and mixing engineer by profession um, first. That's my primary source of income. And music is what I had been working in at the time when this uh, idea for creating a beard oil came to mind, as well as the years prior. I went to school directly after college, studied marketing, but my heart was still in music. So after every class, I was in my room, you know, working on music, working on beats, never classically trained. Um, wow. I took some classes in music, but it was more just something that was a, a creative outlet of mine that I just had a natural ear for. And again, me, my, my technical side, I just got good at crafting sound the way I wanted to. So even that played a part in what it is I'm doing now, just with the experience of trying to make it in the music industry and trying to market music. It all just funnel right into this process. Man, and you have, um, now you, we talked a little bit about the beard oil, but you have a lot of products you've got, and I'm going to read yeah. the list of, I, I, I see you have raw black soap. Um, you've got, of course, the beard oil, the hydrating, um, Hydrating Leave-In Beard Conditioner, Classic Beard Brush, Soft brish, Bristle Beard Brush, the uh, Wooden Beard Comb, Gift Sets, Deluxe Sets, and Herbal Balm. And I want to tell the listeners that I ordered um, one of the smaller kits with the comb in it for my, my son. He has a, a, a beard. He's had to taper it down since because he just got a new job. But he, he has a beard, and I wanted it for, for Christmas. And I want to give a firsthand account that... Um, the ordering process, everything from the ordering process to when I got it was was perfect. They delivered when they said they delivered. The packaging is, and we're going to talk about the packaging later on, is just phenomenal. And that the website, and we're going to talk about that later on, is just phenomenal. I was just taken aback. I can tell you're a person of, of, of excellence. I mean, because everything just looked, looked great. So my son, I was so tempted to or, to open a package then, but, you know, it came wrapped with the, with the plastic <laughs> silicone paper. And I said, oh, he'll never know. I'll just wrap it in Christmas <laughs> paper. And he'll never know. I said, no. I want him to get the full experience. So when he he opened it and he said, well, you know, mom, they're making me um cut my beard because I had a new job. And I says, well, Quentin, my my uh, uh, nephew who lives in Chicago, I says, he has a huge full beard. I says, like, he says, oh, no, no, no. I still have some beard. I'm keeping this. So he um <laughs> he texted me um well, just the other day. And he says, mom, I love this. I'm, I really love this. And the, and the comb, he said, he says, later on, he's going to get some more products. So I just, I just wanted to give everybody the first hand review that it, it is all that. And then some, okay. Oh, man, thank you. That, that means a lot. It's always a blessing to know that the product 
which was started as a love for myself is really now beyond myself and really resonating with people. So thank you for sharing that with me. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Now, um, do you find that you have, cause that's, and we're kind of segueing into just a piggyback off of what you said there. I was curious, are you finding that you're getting a lot of people that say, Hey, I'm so glad you did this. We didn't have this. And I'm glad that you actually got this going. Yes. Yes. But Yes, in a unique way. And what I mean by that is, A, there, like I said prior, there were already other beard oil companies out there. There's even, there were even some that were black owned already prior to my knowledge. So Mm -hmm. my journey of starting wasn't to, oh, this looks like a good way to make money. Let me do this too. Like I said, this was something that started as something for myself that I poured a lot of my love into. And then from there, it grew like a plant. And now to address your question, yes, people do say that. And they say that even though there are other companies out there. And I think the reason why they say it is a combination of, wow, this feels like this is something that was made for me, which it was. Me as in the customer saying that, like, wow, like a black man saying, I I can tell, I can feel that this was made for me. But also they can really genuinely feel the heart and the love that's put into it, you know, and I, and I have it on display, you know, I I show my process in my Instagram feed and everything and people, people resonate with that. So it's, it's like a double, double plus, you know, Mm -hmm. they, they can tell that it's love put into it for them. They can tell that it's just not something that's thrown together really quick and sold for a high price. You know, they can, you can read the ingredients and see that, you know, there's, there's quality oils and herbs and balms and waxes infused in these products and that is t- it's, it's tailored for for us primarily you know but it but it's good for everybody yeah and i was just gonna say because i know um it's, it's it is tailored i think primarily for african-american men but is this something because i noticed this beard craze lately i, I must live in a box because mm-hmm. one day i wake up and i said it looks like everybody has a beard so i don't know if this is yeah. a new trend or what this is but but is this something that any uh, body could use it as a beard anybody can use it and you know one of we we have a, a retailer that has our products in in old town pasadena it's a it's a really nice luxury shaving shop and their audience is predominantly caucasian so there's not a lot of african americans that even know about that store let alone shop at it but there was a time I was there visiting and there was somebody who was in there that just so happened to be a customer of mine that had purchased from there. And he was a Caucasian guy. And he said, he didn't know I was the owner at first. I was just kind of seeing what was going on. And, um, he, when I started talking to him, cause he was asking one of the guys about oils and I kind of just chimed in, he said, Oh yeah, I used this, this nature boy balm right here. And then, you wow. know, I usually told him, yeah, and then I had brushes on me at the time, and I was talking to the guy, the one, one of the clerks, and then the guy was interested in a brush. So the product that was additional confirmation that it it does resonate beyond um, the African American market, and it and it can work on any and all hair types. I just wanted to make sure that it worked for us, you know, with me being the very first guinea pig. Okay, <laughs> okay. Now I want to talk, uh, it's getting a little nitty gritty here. I want to talk about process. Now, of course, you don't have to give away any of your trade secrets or anything, but I want to talk about how difficult was it for you and, and how did you go through actually getting the products and the manufacturing and the mixing and the bottling? I don't know. You hear a lot of these stories about people who kind of mix up stuff in their on their kitchen on the on the kitchen stove and it grows and after it grows no longer are the friends and family cooking it up and packaging it but they've got a whole crew so so talk to us a little bit about from the beginning stages to where you're at now and how you're doing that and where how you're uh, handling that yeah so i mean you you pretty much said it that's that's how it started and that's essentially where it is and then evolving out of it started as especially before I educated myself on the process it started as quick research and um my barber told me about a place to find some oils so I went and bought a couple carrier oils and some synthetic fragrance oils just to mix together and try that sparked my interest like ooh, this is cool when it was still a hobby and then like you know some quick hobbies come and kind of fizzled off but then when I relocated over to where I am now near the mountains the spark re 
it, it, the idea of, oh, this beard oil thing kind of resurfaced again. And from there, I took it a whole lot more serious and I researched it a lot more and I researched what it, what carrier oils are and the better ones and essential oils, which are the natural scented and healing oils that you can add to it. And from there, it was honestly a passion. Uh, I mean, not, not a passion. It was a combination of a passion because I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm a creative person and passion plays a huge part in this mixing and crafting process and be patient, taking the time to educate yourself on, you know, what it is you're doing, because if you intend for it to be something beyond yourself, then you need to educate yourself a little more on just what to use, what's the right type of containers to use, yada, 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 you know? And um, from there, it just, evolved it was a it was literally a process of of evolution over time now you use a lot of um natural things and i think i I may have read somewhere where um you you try not to you to get away with from um fragrances and things like that because of what it may or may not do to your your skin talk about that and and how you came about uh, finding your your uh, materials um the materials honestly is i could just chalk it up to research, lots and lots and lots and lots of research, you know, and there's really no uh, other way to, to say it, you know, if anything that I wanted, if I just tried to Google it and find it in five minutes, I didn't. It took a lot of digging and a lot of trial and error and trying different sources, ordering samples, seeing how I liked it, you know, because in the beginning, you don't really know what you like, but as you try more you know, try samples from different companies and, and again, research, then you start to learn, you know, what's quality and what isn't, as well as trying other oils in their raw form. Again, it's just, it's time and it's a process of, of evolution. And just like learning algebra, you learn pre-algebra, then you learn algebra, then you learn algebra too. And before you know it, you're, you, you know, algebra, you know, mm-hmm. so it's literally just a process of research, experimentation, trial and error, and refining your process. Now, I want to talk about those beautiful handcrafted uh, wooden combs. Um, they they are just, I mean, and I they're sturdy. I touched them. I had an opportunity to really look at it firsthand. Now, did you have, and now I'm not sure, I think, is this AR Carbon? Did they, did they produce this or did you get these? I think I read something about maybe you went to overseas or how, how did you get that comb made? <laughs> so, yeah, so we definitely didn't go overseas. So the the whole comb, the creation of the comb was a blessing. Um, for a long time, I had wanted a comb, but something in me was just holding off because I did not want to go overseas for it. And there was a comb company, another black owned company that I had my eye on for a while. And it turns out they had had an eye on us for a while. And one day, literally right at the right time, right at the right time before I cracked in ordered from overseas he reached out and said hey i had an eye on you i noticed you don't have a comb and so long story short we talked and we were both very transparent i told him that i'm a very creative person and i want to be very hands-on with the cre- with the with the creation of the very first nature boy comb so to answer your question we, we created that comb from scratch together from oh. from on planks of wood this was there was no really? overseas order of the comb. these we get raw planks of wood we designed that that um, that comb. It was a six month process of bouncing ideas back and forth. Jay, his name is Jay from uh, Carbon AR. He's an amazing creative mind, um, and we just bounced ideas. And we, again, like I said, it was that process of refinement and evolution. And then before you know it, we got this beautiful design, and we refined the teeth a bunch of times. He sent me a comb. I said, "Oh, this one's good, but we got to do the teeth a little better." And then once we finally got it, and we both knew like this is it. So he does the um, he does part of the wood, and he does the uh, the laser cutting with his partner. Then he sends it to me. And I do the the quality control and the finishing and the sanding on the teeth, and then I also condition it, and then I package it and ship it out. So it's a beautiful partnership that we have from scratch to handing to customer in hand. Yeah, I mean, it really, really is a good comb. It's beautiful, and and for um at the end of the show, of course, we're going to have the website on the show notes. But you, the w- listeners, have got to go and and look at the the design. It's very unique, and it is a good comb. I'm a little jealous. I'm going to ask at towards the end of this. Uh, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself because I, I was going to say, you know, I, I can't wait for you to come out for the female products. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, tack, it's tacking the idea on the idea board for sure. 
Okay. <laughs> now let's, um, we're going to segue again here and talk a little bit about uh, funding. A lot of new people getting started out in business um, find it very difficult to get started. And of course, everybody has their own testimony and what have you. I don't know if you did Kickstarter. Did you save? Did you have investors? How difficult was it for you to get funding and to get up and going with your dream here? Honestly, um, you know, and I can only speak on my particular venture. It wasn't that bad because, again, it was very, it was a natural, organic, creative process. So it was more time invested than financial. But the fi- initial financial investment, it wasn't even that much. It wasn't even over a thousand dollars. I might have started with maybe about seven hundred or so, and the rest was was creativity and time. Like the packaging, the design of the packaging was designed in house. I designed the packaging. My dear friend, she designed the logo. My dear friend and I, we built the website from scratch. Credit goes to her, though, Tiffany. So a lot of the all of the work was done either in-house or through extended members of my family or my tribe, as I call them. So there wasn't a need to outsource to a lot of other people to pay, nor was this a very expensive uh, venture that required a large financial burden to get off the ground. You know, it just took time where I'd save money. Where I save on money, I invested more with my time. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because a lot of people will get discouraged and they, you know, I got to get this going right away and it's going to take trillions of dollars. But you took your time and bit by bit, piece by piece, you you built it. And it was nice that you had other people to, to help you with that. And you have uh, being a creative that that um, certainly helped. And it's funny because my very next question I was going to ask you was about your website. This has got to be, and I'm not just saying this, I look at a lot of websites. <laughs> this has got to be in the top five best websites <laughs> that I've ever seen. <laughs> It is just so good. The pictures, the the flow of it. I don't know. I, I have my own website that I do and I do some, but I, can, I can't come anywhere near that. I, I use um, WordPress and the, the, the elegant themes. Divi is what I use. And I don't know what, what did you say? Your name was Tiffany. I'm not sure what she yeah, uses, Tiffany. but uh, oh my goodness. It's very, 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 very nicely done. You know, so kudos Thank to you, you on that. Now, so did she also work with the design? Who who designed your packaging and things like that? So I designed the packaging. Tiffany designed the logo. But Tiffany was also the mind that I bounced a lot of ideas off of. Like with, with the creation of the packaging, that, again, was the evolution of a bunch of failed, terrible ideas. Like I would <laughs> literally wake up every day with an idea like, oh, maybe I'll put grass or leaves inside of the box since it's nature but that was obviously a terrible idea but that idea of packing something in the box led to the idea of foam after i looked over at a microphone box that i had and was like oh that might work so the packaging the packaging was all again that was all here you know and I was shooting, I did a Tiffany, and she was saying, yeah, that sounds cool, or eh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, so it was a blessing just to have her as a mind to, you know, bounce ideas off of. And even with the creation of the website, we worked together on that hand in hand with her, with her being the engineer, so to speak. So she was able to extract ideas from me. I was able to design things as I could and send them to her. And she built that site from scratch. She didn't use a template at all. Oh, she my used, goodness. Um, yeah, no template. It's a blank canvas, like blank canvas. She built that site. And it was an 18-month process of developing everything, this whole company, before it launched. So, again, it wasn't a, oh, I want to do this beer thing. I want to launch in three months. I thought I was going to launch about four or five times, but didn't just because, you know, just it wasn't, it wasn't right. But once it was ready and right, you know, it was off to the races. I, I love your, your spirit of patience. <laughs> most people, most people really don't, they really don't have that. And you, you can miss a lot yeah. if you don't, you know, take your time and really look. And I know that, that we often hear a lot of people say, and I listen to a lot of podcasts, and a lot of people say, just get it out there, launch, 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 just do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. But I mean, you have to, to, there is a balance and you have to use There's wisdom. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, you have to, and I, I can tell, and again, when listeners, please, you have to, if you don't do anything else, you've got to visit the website. Just perfectly done. I mean, well, to me anyway, it just looks very, 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 very nicely done. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Now the, the next topic here is marketing. So once you you built it, and I know that oftentimes when you build it, they may not come, but how did you mm-hmm. uh, and how do you, uh, some of the primary ways that you promote and you market your product? So the 90, I would say 90, 90% of the marketing is done through Instagram. One thing I learned is that it's very hard to spread yourself across multiple avenues of, you know, social media or means of marketing, especially when you're just getting started. Instagram was something that I found to be easy because I'm a visual person. I have a minor, a slight passion for photography. Actually, I'm not even going to downplay that. I, I, I like taking photos. So I have an eye for photography, so it was just easy. It was fun to use, and I embraced the challenge. And through that, curating my Instagram was just as dear to me as building the site. So there's a lot of care and detail that goes into that. And through that, that's where the majority of the traffic started to come from. And then that's where I met Brandon Patton, who owns Black Men's Grooming Den, um, the, the gentleman whose uh, interview you've seen. And um, he was another core part of the growth of the brand because he extended the brand to his audience. And then from there, it just, you know, started to grow like a tree with different limbs and branches. So, wow. but yeah, it was in, Instagram. Instagram and using Instagram the right way, not bombarding people. I never, I never press for sales. I never press for sales. I let the product speak for itself. Yeah. Now, do you, you said, okay, you like photography. Did you take the pictures that appear um, on the website? Yeah. So, so on the website, the website was a collaborative effort between uh, a gentleman named Raimundo Santos. He's an amazing photographer, another dear friend of mine named Pro and myself. And from there, all the photography since then on the Instagram, or I'll say most of it, if I'm not reposting is done by me as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, good, good. Now, I know there's got to be more um, things in store. I'm sure you've got some other things up your sleeve, unless you just don't want to let the cat out of the bag. But what do you, what, what's next for your, for your company? Uh, so this year, um, the focus is more on, and these are, these are, I'm, I'm paraphrasing and I'm using this, I'm, I'm mentioning these lightly because I'm still trying to craft them into the game plan, but there's more, uh, involvement with the community that I want to do. There's a, a scholarship that I want to start a scholarship or a grant. I haven't decided yet. I still have to do some research and talk to some people, but, um, there's a community that I want to reach in the college realm to give back, not only to encourage them with my unique journey, you know, being a college graduate, but taking somewhat of the off course and, you know, still being able to pursue my passion and what that type of drive takes and to you know put some money in their pockets because mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's rough when you, it can be rough in college, you know, trying to balance keeping your grades up and keeping gas in your car. So that's something I want to do. And, I want to get the product into more barber shops and do more um, grooming courses with barbers so that they can learn, so that they can offer that as a service to their clients. Um, and that's just to name a few. There are other, there are a lot of other ideas that are on this huge wall in my mind, this idea wall. But um, you know, things have to be prioritized. You know, yeah. as we all learn doing, running our own business, you got to put things in this in the proper order. Now, did you did you say that you were maybe just might be doing a woman's line? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I want to, you know, but even like I said, even with that, you know, it's up on the it's up on the board. It's on the but, board. <laughs> you know, it, it's on it's it's for sure on the board because people are definitely asking. But um, you know, it'll come in time when the time is right. But my girlfriend, she uses the products. She'll. She dips into my products all the time, and she sometimes she'll oh. use the balm and her <laughs> yeah, and her dreads, or she'll use the conditioner. Um, you know, she was part of the inspiration behind creating the lip balm. So okay. you can use the women can use the products, but to specifically craft them for women with a scent that's more geared towards the the, the feminine, that's hopefully down the line. Now, do you do uh, public speaking? It seems like you would, um, even with the venture that you're going to do as far as the outreach, but even just to educate people on entrepreneurship and, and um, do you do any type of public speaking? Um, when the opportunities arise, that's also something that I'm 
setting my intentions or trying to manifest into the future is doing that without rushing the process or stepping into it prematurely, but putting that energy out there because I feel I have a lot to say and a lot to give from my own experience. So I have done some on my campus already, um, as well as, you know, a couple of times in the past with different ventures. So I am up for it. I am open to it. And whenever the opportunities come or whenever I'm able to find them, I'm, that's something that I'm, I definitely love to participate in. And I always ask that because, I mean, I don't know how many people will be able to actually listen to this podcast, but you, I could just, I can envision you as somebody that would be a perfect person to go out and to um, encourage um, young entrepreneurs and, and well, and old ones too, to just, to go for it. I like it when somebody takes an idea and then just, really makes it happen and it's tangible and in your hand and you really made this this work. Now this is the podcast designed with the beginner in mind and I have an acronym H-E-L-P try to give words of hope, words to enlighten, words to get people to launch and to persevere. So in winding this down and in closing it up here, what type of words of encouragement would you give to an entrepreneur or somebody out there who is kind of thinking about giving up and throwing in the towel? They've been at it for a while and they're a little discouraged. What type of uh, words of encouragement would you give them to just hang in there? I would tell them to trust their ideas and believe that their ideas are valuable too. And that's coming from an authentic place because for a while I lost sight of the value in my own voice and ideas. I started off with a lot of confidence as a youngster, but then somewhere in my young adult years, it kind of started to taper off. And that over time I realized, no, there is a significant amount amount of value here in what it is I have to say, what it is I can add to the world and what it is that's to come that I don't even know about yet, you know? So Mm -hmm. I would encourage them to just trust that and not to worry about thinking too large. You know, you can't really skip steps. And if you can't envision the grand master plan yet, it's probably because it's not that time. And maybe your first small step is right in front of you and you need to focus on taking that and allowing that first step to reveal what the next three or four steps will be. So it's just to trust, trust, trust yourself in your gut. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's great. Uh, Well, thank you so, so, so very much. You have been a great uh, inspiration and a wealth of knowledge. Now, Jacob, tell our listeners how they can can get in touch with you if they want to um, get your product or just uh, contact you. What's your contact information? So our website is natureboyproducts, that's plural, natureboyproducts.com. Um, you can reach by email at info at natureboyproducts.com. And our best social media avenue is our Instagram, which is at natureboyig, that letter I and the letter G, like Instagram. Um, we are also on Facebook. You can search for us under Nature Boy Grooming Products. And we just launched our YouTube channel. You can search for Nature Boy Grooming Products there as well. But um, if you stick with the website and the Instagram, that's just the easiest to remember. And one of those two avenues will work for sure. Um, I have my phone on me all the time, and I respond to everybody to the best of my ability. Now, spell your last name and, and pronounce it. I might, have, I might have butchered it when I tried to pronounce it. Oh, I meant to tell you. No, you got it right. I, I, meant, to, <laughs> I meant to say, I appreciate that. It's so Q-U-E-T-A-N-T. It's Ketan. Some people put the qu in the beginning. That's I, I take that. You know, I've heard okay. my name butchered, but you got, you got it right. So, okay. Thank you. All right. Now, speaking of getting to getting in touch, I want all our listeners to please log on to www.wohwfactorbusinesspodcast.com. And when you're there, click on the con- Get Connected button. And I want you to subscribe. You can subscribe in Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. And we're now on Spotify. So connect so that you won't miss any of these good conversations that I have with our great guests like we had today. And I thank you all so, so very much for listening and have a great week. Goodbye for now. Thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this session, be sure to subscribe in iTunes and log on to wohwfactorbusinesspodcast.com for show notes, free resources, news, and more.